this Bible is a book for the living. Hallelujah. You want to have a meaningful life. You want to live a meaningful life. Study this Bible. It's a book of wisdom. It's a book of life. There's life in it. So we have lessons we learn from it. Even motivational speakers use this Bible to motivate people. We use Bible principles. Listen very well, church. In our weekly Thursday morning program, every Thursday we have a special program, breakthrough program. We call breakthrough program from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Then we go to our businesses. We achieve so many things coming here. It's a wisdom behind this. It's a revelation behind this. When the Bible says pray without ceasing, listen very well. Pray without ceasing. There's a reason we are supposed to watch and pray. When you want to undertake a journey, listen, when you want to undertake a journey, even though you had your morning prayer, when you enter that motor, even those who travel by air, when you finally sit down on that aircraft, before the aircraft takes off, you offer some short prayer. Before the motor takes off from the motor park or even start driving with your own car, you will still pray. And we know that whatever is committed into the hands of God is safe. And we know that the Bible says in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will do something. He will direct your paths. And some of us here, we, the area of our business, in the area of our endeavors, we have competitors. In your business, in your market, there are competitors. And don't sit down there and think that you are, you are a Christian, therefore nothing will happen. The reason why nothing happens is because you are a Christian and you apply and work by Christian principles. It's not Christianity, it's, it's a walk. Walk, W A L K, not W O R K. It's a, it's a walk. It's a walk with God. And, and it gives us wisdom and it gives us revelation. And I like to always remind the brethren that once you become a Christian, your battle begins. You have competitors competing with you in the same area of your vocation. They know where they belong. You too, you belong somewhere. They do something before they come and open their market in the morning. We too come here on Thursday morning and commit that application. Commit that contract you are going. Commit that interview you are going. Commit that your business you are going to open your shop with that money. We do this just once in a week. Commit it unto the Lord. That your certificate that up to now you have not gotten a job. Come and present it to the Lord. It's a special program. And there's something about God. Whatever you agree, it's a covenant keeping God. If you decide that today... It is for healing. He will bring the healing anointing. If we say today we are gathering for, for marriage, he will bring marriage anointing. If we say we are gathering here today for fruit of the womb, he will bring, uh, he will bring children to deliver to those looking for children. And if we say you want breakthrough, we dedicate a particular time for it. That is the anointing that will come. That is the wisdom. So every Thursday we drop one or two things that will help us. For my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are certain little, little things we share 
Then we pray, we bless, we do the prophetic action. From 7 a.m., we close. 10 a.m., we make sure we close that early for people to go and possess their possession. And I picked that inspiration from an interview that was given to a brother. Brother Cosmos Maduka was granted, I mean, our brother granted an interview to uh, one of the television stations. And I said something here, I, I said it on, on Thursday, that, you know, every preacher is a witness. And I said that a poor man, a poor man, cannot teach prosperity. Correct? If you are on the bus stop and then you are saying, come to my God. He's a good God. If you come to my God, he will supply everything you need. He will, get, he will do. The first thing the unbeliever are passing to see evidence, he will see evidence of what you are preaching, even from your appearance. You cannot teach love when you don't have love. You cannot teach prosperity when you don't have prosperity. I mean, something around you to confirm that you, there's a principle you apply and this is the result. And so, in this same rugged faith called the end time message, it's a very rugged faith. Hallelujah. And that's why it's not everybody. It's not, it's not everybody that can follow it. And that God everywhere, everywhere has somebody, has his witness somewhere. William Abraham is the one that preached that message entitled that, uh, he, uh, is it the title or he kept emphasizing that God always leaves himself a witness. God always leaves himself a witness. All of you that are policemen, Taking bribery and compromising everything, there is a police officer there that will never partake of that because he's a Christian. In the custom service, there's a Christian there. Hallelujah. In that your university, young girl, young boy, in that your university, there are scripture union believers, Christians there, the same age with you. Even more beautiful than you, sister. They are there as witness. Which witness? So that he will judge you. He will use them to judge you. But this time I'm not talking about judgment. Because the Bible says we should provoke one another to what? To good works. There are inspirations we can draw from people. Because when we talk about successful business. And you know something very interesting? That we know that the most enterprising tribe in Nigeria are the Igbos. They're the most enterprising. When you talk of business, entrepreneurship, enterprising generally, they are known for it. And so, but even within it, amen, there is all the wuruwuru that is going on there. But there is somebody who is also an Igbo man and he's a Christian and he's in this same end time message that God has raised for us as an example of a Christian businessman. So we can learn something from him. And there's one thing I want us to learn from him today. Listen to him. Listen very well. You want to join anything, you can join. And from there, we will Pick the inspiration from what he spoke. In a very short interview, he granted the channel's television not too long ago. Welcome back. What is the role of integrity in business? It's everything. Don't make any promise that you cannot discount. If you, if you get this key and understand it and apply it in life, there's no limit you cannot go. I, will, if, I must thank God for meeting the Japanese early in my life. They taught me integrity, not church, not, uh, not mosque. 
I am a very observant person. You know, I didn't go to school, so I learned by observant. observant. Meeting the Japanese and learn that from them provided me an unprecedented credit facility. Many of my competitors could truly not measure me. Like, where does my financial strength come from? Because these are people, they watch you and keep you under close observant. Once they believe you, the Japanese, they say they are like diesel engine. They don't get start easily. The Americans are like gasoline. But if the Japanese start, they carry you through any mountain, any hill. Usually, they don't go to church. They don't go to mosque. They don't read Bible. Their Bible is letter of credit. Their church is business. You meet a Japanese and said, uh, how is your family? Say it's not necessary. Ask how is business. If business is good, family is good. If business is not good, family is no good. So this is their church letter of credit. But I was able to crack the Japanese that they were shipping goods to me on open account because they believe I understand what commitment was all about. And, uh, and that gave me opportunity that many of my peers could not imagine. Many couldn't understand how did I have such capacity to be able to stock and have everything I want at every time because of integrity. Um, I happened to had some experience in this country. Today, all my principals, BMW, Ford, Jaguar Land Rover, Rolls Royce, all of them deal with us an open account. We didn't pick it on the street. I'm sure it will be surprising to a lot of people to know that all the banks in Nigeria lent Koscharis money on a negative pledge. It's part of life ambition as a young man to build my business to where I will be financial sufficient. I won't see any good business to do that I couldn't find finance to do it. This doesn't make me reckless. It's a level of discipline that you acquire. The death of my father brought a lot of discipline in my life. And let me say this uh, because it will be very unfair if I don't add it in this comment that I give credit to real mother, godly mothers. I give them credit. They make all the difference in the life of the people. My father died when I was four and my mother became a single parent. How they have four children in quick succession? Only them knew. I was the second in the family. My mother discovered my entrepreneurship. At the age of five, I already started hawking on the street. Devoted Catholic woman, pray every morning, taught me the, the hunger of God, the desire, get up every morning, pray those Catholic rosary. I almost hate God for what my mother did. And I dare try to sleep, she will spank me. And that hunger developed for love for God. And she told me to believe in myself and to believe in God. And this was a foundation that if I live a million years, I cannot discount. And that is really where my upbringing. That's the really thing that brought about all the things we are talking about. The discipline my mother imparted in me at a younger age. Did she live to see you become? She lived to see me Chairman Koscharis. Koscharis group. She seen Koscharis becoming reality before she 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 parted away. She saw it. Finally, there was in 2012 the celebrated 21 billion naira old deal between you and the Ifanyi Bar of Capital. Have you recovered? all of your money a very bad memory something i <clears throat> i live and i pray that god help me not to remember but i've always believed i've preached integrity all my life i met that situation but god also subjected me to a test because i borrowed that money i gave to that young man from bank and i didn't sign no paper because of my integrity and I could have walked away from that transaction. I own a share in one of financial institutions. I was a major shareholder. I sold all of it to zero. 
to meet that obligation. I paid that debt. Last year, 2014 April, I got only 16 billion naira back from Amcom out of 21 billion naira, an interest rate of 6 billion. Every month, 300 million naira dropped in my account as interest rate. So I lost over 11 or 12 billion naira on that transaction. Big lessons for me, but here am I, I am alive, and my franchise is saved. I will always make money, but I didn't lose integrity. Dr. Cosmas Maduka, we thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. Can we clap our hands for our God? I say clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. And all the emphasis here is integrity. And so today we'll be looking at the Christian integrity. The Christian integrity. The Christian integrity. Integrity is an English word. It's not a Bible scriptural word. But what is the meaning of integrity? Integrity means the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. I repeat, the quality, that's the definition, dictionary definition of integrity, is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. It is a key to success. And it is also the reason why many people don't make it in life when given opportunities. And the Bible stresses the need for this integrity as one of the qualifications that you will succeed in your spiritual life, in your work with God. And he puts it this way. We will read some scriptures. I will refer to scriptures. Let's start with Psalm number 15. The first, uh, Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 15, from verse 1. Now, now and please, it, is, it may be all somebody needs. Sometimes deliverance just comes from change of mind, change of attitude. That's all. Change the way you do things. You've been doing it this way. You have not benefited. It has not progressed your life. It has not benefited. It has not added any value to you. Why not try something that will definitely add value? Especially when there is a testimonial to that effect. And this is the way the psalmist put it, Psalm 15 and verse 1. It says, Lord... Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Abiding in your tabernacle there is remaining constantly in the presence of God. Always. Listen very well. Church, we speak, last week we speak about showing you, yet show you, show you a more excellent way. There is always a better way of doing things to achieve better results. And I want you to note in these qualities that will be given, take note. He did not mention fasting and prayer in this verse. I mean, in this chapter of, of Psalm. Among what will qualify you to always remain in the presence of God is goes beyond, if you just jump into fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer will work only if you fulfill these other conditions. If not, your prayer will be in vain. Your fasting will be in vain. Because, remember, God answered no prayer of sinners. In fact, he said the prayer of a sinner is abomination. God cannot progress you outside of his laid down principles. You are operating outside his principles. You are on your own. And yet he tells us, without me, you can do nothing. We need him. And he gave us these principles. 
Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? This is a qualification. Number one, he that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. And this is where we are going concerning integrity. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. That is integrity. You swear to your own heart. And we have examples in the Bible. The example of Jephthah in Judges chapter 11. Let's read it. Judges chapter 11. The story of Jephthah. Let's read it from verse 29. Listen to the story so that we know why we are emphasizing this. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh and passed over Mizpe of Gilead and from Mizpe of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow. He vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever, whatsoever, anything, anything, cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's. And I will offer it up for a burnt offering. That is, I will kill it, slaughter it, put it, and um, put fire so that the smoke will reach up to heaven to celebrate. So you can be sure he had his mind on his goods, on his chicken, on his animal. And if it will be a human being at all, then it should be one of his slaves. Verse 32. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Aroah, even till they come to a minute, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyard with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpeh, unto his house where he was living. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbres and with dancings, rejoicing that Papa don't come, Papa don't come. He has won, he has won to meet him with timbres and dancing. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass, when he saw her, that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. And thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I cannot go back. Integrity. He that sweareth to his heart. And changeth not. That is integrity. You say it's Jephthah. Let's go to John again. Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. And let's read it from verse 1. It's, a, it's a, a familiar story there. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias sake his brother Philip's wife for John said unto him it is not lawful for thee to have her that was his offense that's why he put her in, put him into the prison 
for challenging him a prophet a preacher a pastor stood before the king that has power over life and death to correct him of immorality of corruption oh may god raise this type of preachers in nigeria that's why he put him inside prison and when he would have put him to death he wanted to kill him but he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet but when herod's birthday was kept the daughter of herodias danced before them and pleased herod only god knows the type of dance that she must have danced so that the king was very happy whereupon he promised with an oath he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she will ask anything you ask me to give you even if it is half my kingdom even if it is anything anything you ask me i will give you and he said it publicly everybody had it and she being before instructed of her mother she went to meet the mother and asked the mother what, 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 what should i ask and you guess what the mother told her to ask and she being before instructed of her mother said give me here john the baptist's head in a charger in a clean plate and the king was sorry you can see how painful it was to him nevertheless that's where i am going for the old sake for the sake of the vow he has made for the sake of the oath he has speaking the promise he has made and for the sake of them we sat with him at meet in that celebration he commanded it to be given her the head of john the baptist and let me use this opportunity to tell some legalist christians who say it is unscriptural to celebrate birthday because the only birthday celebration recorded in the bible it cost the head of john the baptist it is not because it is a birthday that is why they did not kill john the baptist to celebrate the birthday you understand it now it was an expression of integrity that caused even the head of john the baptist herod was not doing it happily herod knew that that very killing of somebody like that was going to spoil his birthday so don't link the killing of john the baptist to birthday but link the killing of john the baptist rather to a king who knows that once the word of a king goes forth it goes with integrity that is the extent integrity we go he does swear to his heart and will not change it integrity for the old sake and we're listening we watched the interview granted by a brother maduka you saw it he has his integrity to protect he calls that integrity he calls it a franchise he calls it a franchise some of you may not understand what a franchise is there is a name you make hallelujah there is a name you make that that receives certain value it receives certain value that that value is protected so that that value is not destroyed when you want to associate with that name there are conditions that are given before you associate with it 
Maybe you don't even know that there are some churches that have become franchise. There are. And, and that is what some people, even Pride Assembly, has a name of a church, has a franchise. You know that if people know that I am associated with Pride Assembly, they say, oh, Pride Assembly, oh, you are Pride Assembly, then they will believe you and associate with you and deal with you. So we understand that there are some churches that when another church wants to come up, a new minister wants to set up a church, and he knows, you know, to get members, they will come to the headquarters and they say, we want to use your name to start our ministry. And I understand that they will give them condition. Every month, you should be bringing this. Every month, you can be bringing this. And know that this is why we stand for it. Must be like this, must be like this, must be like this. Then when you stand, then you can remove that name. And then you can have your own name. And that is the franchise. You hear of Hilton, Sheraton, and those big names. They are well-known hospitality names in the industry. There are people that know that if this is Hilton, they have a standard. And so they will not lodge anywhere else except there is no Hilton, except there is no Sheraton. And they call them Sheraton Organization. I'm trying to make you understand the meaning of franchise. And so, anywhere you reach, and so when you want to join them, you want to build a hotel, you will meet them first. And they'll tell you, for you to use our name, this is a condition, this is the standard we maintain, the rules must be like this, it must be like this, it must, when you finish, they will even send people from beginners, you are building it, they are making look at it, because of that franchise. And, Brother Cosmos said, he was doing, taking certain actions to protect his franchise. And the benefit of his franchise, and that franchise that he has, is integrity. That is the franchise he has. And that is what has been making name for him. He didn't go to mountain to pray for favor. He didn't do 21 days fasting to get favor. He built that franchise. He built integrity. Hallelujah. And that will be tested. That will be tested. Uh -huh. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. Remember the definition of integrity again. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Strong moral principles principles many of us don't have any morality at all what do I mean by that you don't care what people think about you what people feel about you you don't care what people think about you you don't care what people feel about you you don't care once I can get what I'm looking for from you. Na 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 na. By crook or by hook. I don't care if you like. Come back if you like. No, come back. I don't get what I define. I don't get what I define. I don't get and and and. You think that is life? Integrity. Praise the Lord. And I believe integrity is a franchise, especially in the area of business. Even in your office. Even in your office. They will call you names because you refuse to compromise with them. They will do everything. But integrity, franchise. You may lose something here now. But you never can tell. Amen. Hallelujah. I will come later on 
to the reward of integrity. Then maybe you'll understand me better. Integrity has to do with the conscience and it's a condition of the heart. There's a statement that Apostle Paul made in Acts chapter 24 verse 16. Acts chapter 24 verse 16 he says, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. That is his testimony. That is his franchise. That is his life. I read it again. And herein do I exercise myself to have always, always a conscience void that is free of offense towards God and towards men. And so he made this statement in chapter 23 and verse 1. He says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the counsel when they brought him, uh, his accusers brought him for trial. And Paul, earnestly beholding the counsel, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. So integrity has to do with the conscience. Not just towards man, but also towards God. And what does it say? Integrity is summarized. Number one, is that you keep the vow, you keep the oath, even to your heart. And secondly, he say, where conscience come in now, is, see, only me, I'm here now. If I do this thing that I want to do, nobody will know. Nobody will ever find out that I did it. But you know it is wrong to do it. But you know if you do it, nobody will know that I did it. Nobody will find out. And yet, you refuse to do it. That has to do with the conscience. Because you have your conscience to judge you. And you have a God that seeth all things. Men may be looking at you outwardly as a very honest person but does God also look at you like that when you are alone and nobody can ever discover that you did this nobody will ever ever know and yet you say you will not do it that's integrity that is a conscience free of offense before God and before man. Remember, we are talking about those who qualify to remain in God's blessings, in God's glory, in God's presence. One, that God can stand by you at any time. And this conscience has to do especially when something is committed into your care. When something is committed, and this Lack of integrity has pulled down so many people. Pulled down so many people. Lack of conscience. Pulled down so many people. Many of you lost your job. It's because what you did was found out. What you did was found out. as the truth. I know of, uh, uh, in fact, not just I know of, up to yesterday, after vigil, our brother was sharing something with me. You know, because I was sharing something with him. I said, how do you cope? How do you cope? I have experiences with brethren that I entrusted things into their hands because I thought they are Christians and they disappointed me so much. I said, how do you cope with that? Because I know in your companies, you've employed many brethren. And he told me, ah, that is what he faces regularly. And told me, a pastor of a branch of 
one of the churches, let me not call the name now, that also has franchise, franchised name, the reigning church. He said, he also employed him. And before you know what, the dirtiest thing anybody can do when you entrust a matter before him. Even went to clone certificates. Even went to clone uh, resolutions. Certificate of incorporation. Clone it. Fake it. And open account. <laughs> integrity. Integrity. And before you know what he said it, when he was caught, he said he called a young man. <laughs> why did you do this? He said he wanted to know. Is it that he has any problem? Why, why is it problem that pushed him into it? What is it? He said it was a pressure from his church to meet target. So you are still to give God. Which God are you serving? Amen. Apostle Paul again in Hebrew chapter 13 and verse 18. What did he say? Pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience in all things. Willing to live what? Honestly. That is the testimony of a minister. That one is for minister. And that is very difficult to get, even among church workers. Church workers, church workers. They were telling me about the church. A very big church. That they will, they will count money. After offerings, they will sit down in a particular room and count money. And the overseer, the bishop, happened to suspect something was happening. You know, it's very easy. You know, if somebody says, uh, he has, maybe somebody come to the office and says, uh, I want to uh, give this amount to the church. And maybe the bishop say, go now, uh, $2,000, $2, $20,000, uh, brings it cash. He said, go to the altar, pay it in the offering box. So it's expected at the end of the day, you will see that reflected now. And they brought everything. They did not see any dollar there for that day. <laughs> Church, oh. <laughs> so what happens? He decided to install cameras in the room. And they didn't know that he was in his office watching them. Not just that it is one person that did it. Oh. All of them, they put and they were sharing. Put your own hair. Put your own hair. Put your own hair. And the man was in his office watching them. And so he stood up from his office and went to the accounts office with the security and said, everybody stand up. <laughs> Bring the money in your pocket. Do they have integrity before God and before man? Even within themselves. Even within themselves. Even within themselves. Honest living. You hear somebody say he's a, he's a pastor. And of all things that they will accuse a pastor, is a fornication with a sister. If they accuse you, say you chop money, it's even understandable. No, you understand what I mean. Not that it's an excuse. I say, as horrible as it is, but that you sit down here and then you are fornicating with the sister and then you are preaching. Preaching what? And the sister sitting down there, ride on pastor, ride on pastor. The testimony of Job must be the testimony of every believer. Let's read it. Some of them. We can't read all. Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22 verse 29. From verse 29. Job 
chapter 22 and from verse let's read it Job chapter 22 verse 29 and verse 30 this is the way he put it when men are cast down then thou shalt say there is lifting up and he shall save the humble person this is the reason he shall deliver the island of the innocent and it is delivered by the pureness, pureness of thy hands. The purity, pureness, cleanness is itself a point of deliverance. It's a power that delivers, that delivers purity of the heart, honesty. It will deliver you. It speaks for you anywhere you are. Chapter 31, Job chapter 31. And I read it from verse. Let me even read it from verse 1. Job chapter 31, from verse 1. It's a testimony of Job. We all know the story of Job. How he was suffering, all the things he was suffering. He suffered from, and we know what caused it. It was God Himself to achieve His own purpose. And, and people will come there and be laughing at him and say, you are a secret sinner and you are this, you are that, you are paying for your sins. And that's why he had to make this. Look, took an inward look at himself. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes. And I said, this must be the testimony of every Christian. I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think, think that is lost after a woman? Think upon a maid. For what portion of God is there from above and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and the strength punishment to the workers of iniquity? Does not he see my ways? Can you hide anything from God? Does not he see my ways and count all my steps? From the time you left your house to that hotel to sleep with that prostitute, the number of steps you took, God counted it. He knows all things. Verse 5. If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot has hasted to deceit. See his testimony. The summary of his integrity is what he's telling you. He said, if it has ever done that, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity. If my step had turned out of the way and my heart walked after mine eyes and if any blood had cleaved to my hands, then let me sow and let another eat here. Let my offspring be rooted out. If my heart had been deceived by a woman or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another and let others bow down upon her. That is ha, summary of his own integrity. And I repeat, it must be the integrity of every believer. Verse 11. For this is a heinous crime. It's a serious crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges now. If it is a fire that consumes to destruction, I mean, sorry, for it is a fire that is, uh, 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 you know, going after another person's wife, or you are married, you are going after other other women. Adultery, fornication. He said in verse twelve, for it is a fire that consumes to destruction, and will root out all my increase it will destroy my progress that's what he's saying it will destroy my business if he gets himself involved in such he has always known it verse 13 if I did despise the cause of my man servant or my maid servant when they contended with me what then shall I do when God rises up and when he visited what shall I answer him? 
Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? The same God that created is the same God that created you, Oga. If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my muscle myself alone, and the fatherless had not eaten thereof. For from my youth he was brought up with me as with a father, and I have guarded her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, clothing, or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, and if we are not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless when I saw my help in the gates, then let my arm fall from my shoulder blade. Hey, and my arm be broken from the bone. For destruction from God was a terror to me. And by reason of his highness, I could not endure. If I have made gold my hope, because there are people that worship money, or have said to the fine gold, thou art my confidence, because you have money, you have everything, money answering all things. If I rejoice because my wealth was great, because as at that time, he was the richest in that, at that time, at that area. And because my hand had gotten me much. If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart had been secretly enticed, or my mouth had kissed my hand, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge. For I should have denied the God that is above. Because everything I have came from him. That's what he's saying. Verse 29. If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, even, see the level. This man speaking here did not have Holy Ghost. So. This man, Job, did not have Holy Ghost. So. Jephthah did not have Holy Ghost. So. But he had integrity. And the Holy Ghost is supposed to give us a heart of integrity. That is the purpose of the Holy Ghost. You say you have the Holy Ghost. Where is your integrity? See the testimony of a man that didn't have the Holy Ghost. But he just had the fear of God. And he had his integrity. If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him neither have i suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul if the men of my tabernacle said not oh that we had his flesh we cannot be satisfied the stranger did not lodge in the street but i opened my doors to the traveler during during camp meeting in bride assembly here we will be talking please we have visitors coming Please, if you have extra space in your room, can you can you accommodate them? They will come. Thousands of us here. Some of you have duplexes, empty rooms. You will not accommodate any. And when they reach church, you have oh, brother. How are you, brother? You are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. And you call somebody your brother, and he's sleeping on the street. I call somebody my sister, and you are living here in Lagos. And he's staying in a hotel and paying 15,000 naira in a day to attend a program together with you. And you come and take the same cup we are brethren and drinking communion. Integrity. Verse 33. If I cover my transgression as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. For remember, he that hideth his transgression shall not prosper. You hide your iniquity, you will not prosper. Did I fear a great multitude, or did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silence and went not out of the door? Or that one will hear me, behold, my desire is... He said, oh, that one will hear me, behold, my desire is that the Almighty will answer me, and that my adversary had written a book. Surely, I will take it upon my shoulder, and bind it as a crown to me, 
I will declare unto him the number of my steps. As a prince, will I go near unto him? If my land cry against me, like the land of Nigeria is crying against all the leaders, past and present, that the condition we are suffering today, our leaders, or that the fruits likewise thereof complain. If I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life, can you imagine that? He said, Let tissues grow instead of wheat, and cockle instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. The testimony of Job is ended. The summary of the integrity of Job is ended. He trusted God so much. He made the fear of God so much that he made this statement in Job chapter 13 and verse 15. The day I came across that scripture, I saw that I didn't have faith at all. Job chapter 13 and verse 15. Everybody, if you can read, one, two, three, go. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. I read it again. He said, though God, even if God will slay him with hunger, with frustration, with lack of marriage, with sickness that he refused to heal, with anything at all, even if God Papa will even kill me. You kill me, kill me. He said, Yet will I trust in him. His confidence in God will never be derailed for any reason. He said, But I will maintain my own ways before him. I will maintain my own ways before him. What I believe is what I will do. I will not bend it for any reason. I will not bend it. will not bend it for any reason. That's why, because you are a king, Herod does not mean, I will not tell you the truth. Openly, he rebuked Herod, who collected his brother, Philip's wife. He collected the, the wife and killed him. He said, it's not lawful for you to collect your, your brother's wife. It's wrong. You collect it because you are a king. But there were priests. They were Pharisees and Sadducees. They were always visiting the presidency. And they would call him, call her first lady, first lady, first lady, first lady. They would not tell, but there is a man, even if it will cost him his head. You think he didn't know the effect of what he was going to the precaution of preaching someone like that? That is why Jesus Christ in Matthew 11 gave a summary of who Jesus Christ is. He said, who did you go out for to see? Among other things, he said, he said, a reed is shaking with the wind. You know what is a reed? Eh? One grass somewhere, if breeze blow, ooh, he blow this way, he go. He blow this way again, he blow. The direction of the wind change again, he blow. John the Baptist was not like that. Hallelujah. And every Christian, you must declare your faith wherever you are without shame, without fear. I've had people telling me, you, this one, you talk, talk, you know they fear. Fear what? Am I looking for trouble before anybody? And they go find trouble, are they fear, are they, are they thief? Are they, are they, the only people that should be afraid, they are thieves and robbers. And people, when they go chase another man's wife, because the day the man will catch you, you are finished. Any man that they chase other people's wife, untimely death is following his course of untimely death. So when you see me, then you say, you know they fear, or you see somebody smoking, you can say, you know they fear, because you know smoking will kill you. But I'm, I, I am preaching, I'm speaking what God is telling us. And you are saying, you know they fear, I should fear telling the truth. I will speak the truth anywhere. Anywhere I will speak, I will speak it. I will speak it. 
If you don't want to, don't listen to me. Though he slay me, I will still trust him. Whether he give me picking or not, do not affect my serving him. I will maintain my own ways, my integrity before him. You know now, one of the reasons why men take advantage of young girls is they use, they use your condition. It entice you with money. And when you have to depend on a man to sustain you, it is evidence you have no relationship with God. And God hates it. Until you reach a stage where you say, you can imagine a married man will come to offer you money to sleep with you. You know he's not going to marry you. But he's giving you money so that you will sleep with him. Who are you? It's just prostitution. You're a prostitute. A prostitute. And you, brother, that you are doing that to a girl. The girl is a prostitute, but you, you're a devil. You are a serpent seed. And it's worse, brother, if you go to church, if you claim to be a Christian, if you read this Bible, if you ever pray to the living God, it's because you have no conscience. Which conscience? Which God are you talking to? When you are living that type of life, it's grace, it's grace. Do you know the meaning of grace? People who enjoy grace abstain from all works of iniquity. That is the people who understand grace. You who will cheat, cheat a brother, cheat a sister, deliberately, deliberately, deliberately. Are you a Christian? Everybody that has problem, run to God through Christ. Because we too, we are supposed to be little, little Jesuses all around. When people have problem, they run to us so that they will find some comfort. So they will find some peace. So they find some solution. But when they come to you, what do they meet? Christian brother, Christian sister, what do they meet? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Did you see John? Who did you see John? A reed shaking with the wind. Small hunger only, you compromise. Small hunger only, you compromise. Lack of job, you compromise. Your faith, no integrity. I told you the different types of fish. One of the types is crayfish. Crayfish. Because there's a saying that goes, he said, now, nah. eh? Eh? He said, now, nah, condition make crayfish bend. You are a fish, oh, but you are cray. Not a proper fish. Small thing, you just bend your feet. As if this God doesn't exist again. Praise the Lord. Purity of heart. Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verse 1 to verse 5. It's a popular psalm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Telling you who God is. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Qualification. Or who shall stand in his holy place? This is a qualification. He that had clean hands. 
Hallelujah. And a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. And verse 5. He, that person, shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Chapter 26. Chapter 26. The psalm is here. He said, judge me, O Lord, like Job. For I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For the loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons. Neither will I go in with dissemblance. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord. That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house. And the place where thine honor dwelleth. Therefore, hear his prayer. Gather not my soul with sinners nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an evil place. In the congregation, will I bless the Lord. When you see people who are sure of the life they live, when they come before God's presence, they know how to pray. Your integrity is your testimony even before God. Hezekiah, his integrity, his testimony made God to change his mind and added more life to him. Okay now. What is your own integrity? Psalm 17. Hear this prayer of the righteous. How many of us can pray like that? Psalm 17, verse 3. Let's read it from verse 3. In fact, it's a prayer now. It's a prayer. Eh? He was praying you know, to God. This psalm is, listen very well. Let, let, let's read the whole, I mean, let's read from verse 1. Just to catch what I want to emphasize here. He said, hear the right, O Lord. Because that is a condition for God to answer your prayer. Hear, hear, hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Feigned, deceitful lips. Lie, lie lips. Everywhere you go, no truth in that mouth. That same mouth you want to stand and pray to God. That is the problem we have in Christianity. That's why our prayers are not answered. And that is why I preach that message that I titled the toothless bulldog. You are screaming and you think that your prayer will be answered because of how loud you shout. You are thinking that your, your, your prayer will be answered by how many days fasting you have undertaken. You even think that your prayer will be answered because of the type of offering you bring. Your mouth, do you have truth in your mouth? Because after you give the offering, after you, did, you do the fasting, you are going to use your mouth to receive what you want from God. To tell God what you want. God doesn't just bless you because you brought offering. But there's a prayer that goes with that offering. Is your mouth sanctified enough for God to answer your prayer? When you speak, can that situation respond to the words of your mouth? Let my sentence come forth from my presence. Verse 2. Let thy eyes behold the things that are equal. See my testimony. Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am proposed that my mouth shall not transgress. And he added, concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the path of the destroyer. 
And therefore, verse 5, he said, Hold up my goings in thy path, that my footsteps slip not. Praise the Lord. That's the prayer of the righteous. Christianity is very simple. It is the life that is the problem. The ability to live a life where you can walk with God with a free conscience, that is where the problem is. And so he gave the admonishment. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 and verse 6. First Timothy chapter 1. He said, now the end of the commandment, the summary of everything is this. What is it? Charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of what? Faith unfeigned. Faith unfeigned. Praise the Lord. Go to verse 18. Now in verse 18, 19, and 20, he said, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou be by them, by those prophecies, might as war a good warfare. And verse 19, holding faith, our Christian faith, and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck shipwreck of their life and he mentioned name if i had mentioned name here when i could say i had mentioned name i had mentioned name no be named be this we make shipwreck of their faith of whom is himanius and alexander their own was so bad they destroyed the faith so much apostle paul got angry say whom i have delivered unto satan that they may learn not to blaspheme their conscience seared with a hot iron. No conscience. They do this without caring the repercussion. And that is the commonest thing now in Christianity today. And that's in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And in verse 9, you are not qualified to be a deacon. You are not qualified to be a pastor, a minister. This is one of the qualifications. This is one of the qualifications. You must be one that is holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. You know why? Because things are going to be committed into your hands. Things are going to be committed into your hands. Hebrews chapter 10. From verse 19 up to verse 23. This is his advice and his admonishment to us. Having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he had consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God. Verse 22. What did he say? Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for his faithful that promise. Verse 35, verse 35. Listen to that verse 35. He said, cast not away, therefore, your confidence in God. Your confidence for living a life of integrity. Which has great recompense of reward. It will look as if you are foolish when you take certain actions. It will look as if you are stupid when you take certain actions. When you live a certain lifestyle. But there is a reward for it. The reward is both ways. There is a reward known as the wages of sin. Because what you sow is what you reap. 
There's a reward for the lifestyle you have chosen. Negative lifestyle will attract negative results, reward. And a positive lifestyle, and nothing is possible except it is according to the word of God. Praise the Lord. And we have people all around us to see people, you know, who are, their franchise is integrity. We have just seen one now, Brother Maduka. What, 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 what do you think? Why do you think in 2015 they wanted to change government? They didn't know which, which politician they will use to remove a sitting government. They went, that was why they went to bring the man that is there now, Buhari, because the only thing they know him to be is integrity. Now, ability to govern, he may not have it. But when you talk of integrity, that you give something to his charge, that he will not covet it. Everybody knows. How many people here have the testimony he has? That have the opportunity he had? Minister of Petroleum, Minister of a, a, a region that, I mean, Governor of a region that is six states now. Chairman, Abacha wanted somebody that you will trust to be PTF chairman. He went and brought him. Even though they removed him from government, they still know say me, they're honest. Well, I'm not campaigning for him. I say in governance, it's not good. I am saying here, but in integrity, I'm a, I'm a sincere person. And I'm not a politician. I don't have anybody in government. In fact, I've never benefited anything from this government. So I'm not campaigning for him. I'm not among those that will... will uh, use pulpit and be, be doing politics. But I'm telling you, okay, okay. You know the story of Akuili Dora. Okay, let me come to your area now. Because if I talk about you say that because I'm from the north. This woman is an Igbo woman. And I read her story. And she said, she said, she was working in a government establishment years back. And she was given Esther because they, they, they had to go abroad for a conference. And they gave them Esther code dollars. And when she went, she discovered that the money they gave them, over there they provided accommodation for them. They took care of everything, their food and everything. So she brought back the money and returned the money and said, I spent only this, this is the balance. The person that was the head of that organization at that time was now a friend of Obasanjo, who now became president. And he was talking to him. Obasanjo was telling him, which honest person do you think you know that we can put in NAFDAQ? And he said, ah, I don't know how we can locate one particular woman that worked with me. Integrity. Integrity. They went looking for her phone. She said, one day her phone number rang. And he said, now, Oba Sonjo, he said, which Oba said, OPJ. <laughs> she said she was shaking. What did I do? What did I do? Say for her, say, make it come. Personally. Personally. That's why you saw her walking with the confidence she had. She knows what brought her there is integrity. And she maintained that integrity. It pays. If you don't know it pays, then it's because you don't you, you, you don't know what is happening all around you. Mordecai, what made him to get the promotion? His integrity. He was doing his job. He has a job of protecting the king. He was a great man. And he was overhearing people planning to kill the the king that he is employed to watch over. Okay, now. He reported it. He was doing his job. Integrity. It looks as if you, it will not pay, but it pays. We have read in the newspapers where a taxi driver saw some hundreds of thousands of dollars or something like that, that somebody left behind. And he took it and went to look for the person. 
they gave the person and they gave the taxi driver a national honor for integrity, for honesty. Yes, it's happening everywhere. Everywhere is happening that there is a reward for it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It looks as if when you are honest, you 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 you, 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 you have nothing to show for it. My mind goes to one him in our hymn book, hymn number 48. I love what it says there. Hymn number 48, it says, it says, sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide, and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest, and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, Bringing in the ships, bringing in the ships, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the ships, bringing in the ships, bringing in the ships, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the ships, you know what the ship is? The ship is evidence of harvest. That's the meaning of ship. The ship is evidence of harvest. And the next stanza says, Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. The last stanza in that hymn says, Going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the lost souls there are spirit of griefs. When our whip is over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Psalm 126, Psalm 126, verse 5 and verse 6 summarizes that also. Summarizes that also. That there's reward. They that sow in tears. We do what? They shall reap in joy. He that going forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. And to me, the precious seed that is the seed of integrity shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. When you are refusing to follow the perverseness of human beings, everybody looks as if they are overtaking you. You see a pastor comparing his ministry with another minister. Do you know what he's doing? That he's getting all those cars within one year. And to start, who told you the testimony of a minister is his bank account? You see? That's why we don't compare ourselves with anyone. Integrity. Very, very important. To the pure. You see, there's something here. This our God is faithful. Let's read it. Psalm 18, verse 23 up to verse 26. Psalm 18, verse 23. Up to verse 26. See the testimony of the righteous. But there is a statement there that I underline in my Bible. I was also upright before him, before God. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore, had the Lord recompensed me, that's the reward, reward me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight that is how he recompensed me and this is where i underline in my bible that this is who god is with the merciful i'm reading verse 25 with the merciful thou will show thyself merciful that's our god with an upright man if you are upright God will show himself upright. And verse 26, with the pure, God will show himself to you pure. 
And with the forward, we will forward nine. God will show Himself also. Now, so corner corner, He will follow you. That is our God for you. For the Bible in, in Galatians chapter five, I mean chapter six, and verse seven, He says, "Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap." That shall he also reap. And I want to close on this comment for this ministry, especially. One of the things that we take for granted in our walk with God are vows that we make and we don't fulfill. And sometimes, I don't know whether you, you know the implication of some of these actions some of us take. And let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4, 5, and 6. When thou concerning vow, listen, church. When thou vowest a vow unto God, he said, defer not to pay it. For he, God, has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. And he added, it's better is it that thou should not vow than that sh thou should vow and not pay. It is better you don't make the vow at all than that you make the vow and you don't pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither said that before the angel because as you are making that vow, the angel is standing there to collect it. That it was an error. You tell the angel, it was an error. When you do that, wherefore should God be angry? God will be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. Can you see why sometimes your business will just scatter? It may be a vow that you have made and you have not kept it. And so he said in Deuteronomy chapter 23 also in the law, verse 21, 2, verse 22, and verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21, 22, and 23. When thou shalt vow a vow, it was a law unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not slack, don't delay to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require, require, he will require it of thee. And it will be seen in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it's better you don't vow at all, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform. That is the integrity. That is the oath. That is the vow to your own heart. Even a free will offering according to as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. With thy mouth. And it includes all contracts. All contracts. Even when you make a contract with anybody, you sign it, make sure you fulfill it. Make sure you keep it. Make sure you keep it. Make sure you fulfill your vow. You promise anything, you sign anything, fulfill that vow. Including, let's read one scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 24. Verse 14 and verse 15. Deuteronomy, that same Deuteronomy, the next chapter. For all of us, where they employ people, he said, thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers, that are in thy land within thy gates. Verse 15. As his day, as his day, thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it. Don't delay it. For he's poor and setting his heart upon it. Because he's depending on that, on that thing, that your salary. Lest he cry against thee unto the Lord and it be seen unto thee.
Your boy served you for seven years, for six years, according to your agreement. He's hoping to settle his life with what you will give him. Then you deny, he begin to look for trouble. He said, that poor boy will go and cry to God. And when God arises on behalf of the poor, you will know that you too, there is somebody that is higher than you. At the end of every month, the person working for you, he is looking up to that amount, that salary. That is his budget. That is his plan. That is everything. When the debt reach, you pay him. Why are you delaying it? And you have the money to pay him. Why are you delaying it? Why should your servant come and remember, okay, you never pay me my salary? Why? 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 You don't remember to pay him your salary, but you remember to give him work to do. Praise God. Since this ministry started, amen, even when they demolish this place, our first thing we remove from our expenses is salary of workers we have employed. They are first line of charge. If the ministry will continue, nobody them go work. Can the ministry go without them? So if you don't pay them, how do you want them to come and work? And some of you here are delight in it. And when the person asks you, you see, you are not doing him a favor when you pay him his salary. He work for it. It is right. You are supposed to give him plus, plus thank you on top. That's the truth. And be like our governors that refuse to pay salary to workers for months. Wicked people. You see, our type can never rule this country. People, only people who have no conscience. Look at the project that is a good thing, and the workers are hungry. May God help us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying this to condemn anybody. I'm trying to tell you the importance of integrity to our progress. Integrity is maintaining your principles. Let this musician sing one song for me. Integrity is maintaining your principles. Honest. Honest. Your principles. There's principle for business. There's honest business. There's honest. Honesty is required in marriage. Honesty is required in ministry. Honesty is required in every aspect of your life. Honesty, honesty, honesty. And maybe that is the reason why your business will go rise, it go crash. It go rise, it go crash. It go rise, it go crash. You have not recognized God. You have not recognized God, giving the God the right recognition. You have not also been honest enough. It pays so it pays to serve him. It pays to be honest.
Christmas wind.